In this example, we need to simplify these four expressions here. Notice they're all radicals, but they're cube roots. Notice the three, the index on each of the radicals. So I'm having to simplify cube roots. And when you do that, it's useful to be familiar with the basic perfect cubes. So here's a table with x in it and then x cubed. So here are the first eight perfect cubes. So let's look at our first example, the cube root of 8. Remember, what does a cube root mean? It means what number, when multiplied by itself three times, gives me the number underneath the radical sign. So is 8 a perfect cube? Yes, 8 is 2 cubed. So what number, when multiplied by itself three times, gives me 8? It's going to be 2. So now let's look at our next example, the cube root of negative 27. Be careful with the negatives. You're used to the fact that a square root of a negative number is not a real number, but the cube root of a negative number is a real number, and it's a negative real number. Because if you multiply three negatives together, you will get a negative. And now, what is the cube root of 27? Well, 27 is 3 cubed, so the cube root of negative 27 is negative 3. If you're unsure about the signs, quickly multiply negative 3 by itself three times. Three negatives multiplied together, an odd number of negatives, the answer is negative. 3 times 3 is 9, 9 times 3 is 27. Now let's look at the third example. I have the negative cube root of 64. Notice when I have a negative outside a radical sign, it really means I have negative 1 times my radical. So I'm going to have negative 1 times the cube root of 64. 64 is a perfect cube. It's 4 cubed, so the cube root of 64 is 4, and then negative 1 times 4 is negative 4. One word of caution with radicals dealing with 64. 64 is a perfect square, it's 8 squared, but it's also a perfect cubed, it's 4 cubed. So be very careful when you see 64, make sure whether you're taking the square root or the cube root. Now let's go on to our last example. And the negative outside, remember that's like a negative 1, times the cube root of negative 125. Well, the cube root of a negative number is a negative number. And what is the cube root of 125? Well, 125 is 5 cubed. So the cube root of negative 125 is negative 5. So I have negative 1 times negative 5, so the answer is positive 5.